Hello to you, Mr. Schatz. Thanks for joining us. Um, MOD, Pleasure. I think, aren't you? Yeah, there you are. Um, how big a challenge is this week going to be for your boss's premiership? I think, it's, uh, you know, uh, as with uh, every week in politics, there's important stuff happening and uh, it's important that we deliver it. I think one of the massive things this week is uh, this Rwanda uh, plan. And um, we've already reduced the number of uh, crossings by a third this year, slash them by a third this year. We want to go further. We think that it's really important that we completely break the illegal smuggling of people model. And one of the ways to do that is to uh, get this Rwanda plan going. So if people come here illegally, uh, that they will uh, go to Rwanda. Uh, and that's why this legislation itself makes this a big week, as you say. Yeah, absolutely. From former immigration minister, Robert Jenrick, says it won't work. Yeah, look, I mean, the whole purpose of parliamentarians is to scrutinise this stuff, but a lot of other people, including Lord Sumption, who's uh, a, a legal uh, expert, and uh, I think four, three or four different uh, previous attorney generals have all said uh, that this is uh, the right way to proceed. And the modelling suggests that of the current cases which are challenged successfully, 99.5% of them would not uh, be challenged uh, correct, uh, for once this is in place. So I think this is uh, a plan. And look, as I say, we've slashed crossings by one third this year, these illegal crossings. This is a plan to deal with the rest of that. I haven't heard of a plan from anyone else, and particularly not from the Labour Party, uh, to actually deal with this problem at all. So I think this is the right way to proceed and get rid of this disgusting trade in people uh, legally across our English Channel. So that's symbolism, though, isn't it? And it's costing us taxpayers an absolute fortune. And as Labour pointed out several times last week, three times more Home Secretaries than illegal immigrants have found themselves in Rwanda so far. Well, it's all very well to have their the sort of snappy headlines, but what are they actually going to do about it? As far as I've seen the Labour plan... They're going plan, to scrap it. They're going to scrap well, it. Yeah, yeah, they're going to stop it by going to Europe, and this is what we've learned, by going to Europe and agreeing to have 100,000 asylum seekers here from the European system. That is their answer. They don't want to do Rwanda. Yeah, but what are you guys <laughs> going to do? Let's, let, I'll, I'll, I'll question them, as you know, as vehemently and, and forcefully as I question you when they're on in about an hour's time. Why don't you guys just accept that this is not going to work, cut your losses and forget about it and look at other ways to make this work. I, I, I hope you don't mind. I think it would be incredibly defeatist. Um, the point of, of this is that so far, as I mentioned, we've slashed crossings this year by a third. Nothing to every do with Rwanda. Single, every, I was going to say, every single measure that we've introduced, every single one, has been opposed by the Labour Party, voted against by the Labour Party. It's taken longer to get We're them We're not talking in. about Labour, Minister. We're talking about you guys. It's symbolism. It's never going to work. The no, planes are never going to take no. off and it's about time you cut your losses. No, I, don't, I, 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 just don't, I just don't agree. And, and that sort of defeatism uh, might suit others. I, that, that's not, we, we won't stop doing it just because it's tough, uh, just because it's difficult to get through, just because... And expensive. It, well, it's more expensive to allow people to stay here using uh, facilities, hospitals illegally to support an illegal, disgraceful, disgusting uh, trade in people smuggling across uh, the, the channel. That is a lot more expensive than being prepared to spend some money and take some uh, difficult decisions in order to get people off to Rwanda. I don't think, once that scheme is up and running, um, that the when will that uh, people be? trafficking, well, I was just going to say, that the people trafficking business will be viable anymore when, if 99.5% of challenges fail. It's impossible to know exactly, Kay, because the um, parliament needs to pass it, first of all. That can be sped through if Labour finally want to get behind a plan to stop people well, trafficking. they're not going to. OK, so that will, that, that, they'll no doubt try to delay it. Secondly, um, the, 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 doubtless these things will be tested in court. Now, we believe that this legislation is the way to make sure okay. that it's legally robust and gets through the, the courts. I, I can't put a, a date on it. I do know it won't stop if we don't do anything about it. And that is okay. why it's important to pass this legislation. OK, um, I'm sure we'll be returning to that before too long. I read in the paper this weekend that Boris is on his way back. Um, how would you feel about your old boss um, coming back? Well, look, first of all, I should point out that, uh, you know, this past week I've been to the Middle East dealing with that and today I'm launching a yeah, we'll uh, come programme. To we'll to, come to that. We'll come to that. I was that. going to say, la great, launching a programme on, I on know, Ukraine. Ukraine. So, so yeah, I know. a lot of my attention is focused on, you know, two wars, these international issues and dealing with that. I haven't spent much attention 
uh, to people who are not currently members of parliament and, and who knows what will happen in the future. I've been focused on these world events, I'm afraid. Didn't stop Cameron. Um, how do you feel about Boris potentially coming back? Well, look, I, I'd never uh, seek to predict Boris's future uh, other than to say, um, you know, we are in the process here of this is what I'm doing today is why I've got Ukrainian flags behind me launching a maritime I know. Uh, coalition for I Ukraine. Know. Which I I'd know. And, and as I said, Minister, I'll come to that in just a it. second. I'm asking you about Boris Johnson. Would he enjoy your full support if he came back? Well, as I say, Boris Johnson's not even a, a member of parliament. So, you know, neither was Lord Cameron. And he's now the foreign secretary. Well, I don't think Boris is about to come back as a, as a, as a peer in the Lords, as, if that's what you're suggesting. OK, you're not going to answer me. Let me ask you then about what you'd like to talk about, which is Ukraine and you're going to offer them more money. Essentially, we're, we're offering them leadership. So today we're launching the Maritime Coalition. Uh, it's an international coalition led by the United Kingdom alongside Norway. I'm launching it in Admiralty House in London. And that is to help Ukraine, both in the short term, demine the, uh, the seas uh, around it and help to export more grain through the Black Sea. Uh, and then in the longer run, turn Ukrainian's uh, navy, uh, which is small and effectively in exile at the moment, into a NATO-leaning navy, uh, which can help to uh, ensure that they can protect their waters and their trade in, in the future. But it's just another way in which we're helping our Ukrainian friends against the evil of, of Putin's invasion. Um, aid workers say Gazans are being ordered to leave um, Khan Yunus. They have a choice between being killed by airstrikes or being moved to overcrowded shelters where people are dying from disease and dehydration. And still the UK abstains from a humanitarian ceasefire at the UN. So as you know, uh, or may know, I was in the Middle East um, the end of last week. I, I visited uh, one of the kibbutz where uh, men, women and children were slaughtered, burnt, raped, uh, massacred. Uh, and uh, as I was standing there, I saw rockets come out of Gaza and the Iron Dome uh, from Israel come over and hit it. But I was also there trying to ensure that more aid uh, could get into uh, Gaza. And actually, this morning, um, I, I'm pleased to say partly as a result of that visit, Kiram Shalom, which is a, a entry point or a checkpoint, has been opened to get more aid into Gaza. Now, it won't travel through that checkpoint. It will be checked there and still go round to Rafa. So, yes, I'm very concerned about the humanitarian situation in Gaza. I went to the West Bank and met with the Palestinian Authority on the same subject. But it's not quite as black and white sometimes as people present. If you had a ceasefire permanently, then, of course, what you'd be saying is leave Hamas as they are with their miles of underground tunnels uh, dug under hospitals and schools in Gaza, and so you wouldn't have resolved the problem either. So this isn't a straightforward uh, black and white issue as it's sometimes uh, presented, but Britain is doing everything possible to make sure that we get aid and assistance into Gaza to help people who are suffering on, on both sides, I'm afraid. Does your present boss um, deserve the criticism uh, that he will no doubt get later on today for his Eat Out to Help Out scheme? Well, look, I, actually, I think that, you know, Rishi Sunak, uh, who came forward and saved millions of jobs and millions of businesses through his uh, COVID response, um, is actually due a lot of credit. Uh, millions of businesses would have gone bust. Millions of people would have been out of work if it hadn't been for his furlough scheme. And, and schemes like Eat Out to Help Out. Look, it's so easy to look back on things and say, oh, what you should have done is this then, at this moment in time, with you know, perfect 2020 hindsight and say what, what should have been done. Um, but these were difficult decisions that were being made to stop businesses from going bust. And, uh, you know, that in itself would have been uh, a real uh, problem. So, you know, d difficult balanced decisions to make. It's actually why you have an inquiry to look into all of these things, public inquiry. And so that's what's, that's what's happening. So I think we should let that take its course. If you lose the next election, might we see you in the jungle next year? Well, first of all, obviously, we're going to win. Uh, the next election is still a long way away. Uh, and secondly, uh, I can confirm I will not be uh, going on I'm a Celebrity uh, anytime soon or ever, in fact. <laughs> when you say a long way away, is it uh, 2025, the election? Well, well, the backstop is January 2025 is the last um, date. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, there's still many, many months of this uh, parliament to, to run. Uh, we've already halved inflation. We're seeing a third drop in the number of people okay. crossing. We've grown the economy. 
Okay. Uh, so there are lots of good things, good things happening that I know you won't want me to talk about. There's lots of good things happening and we intend to finish that job by uh, think... making sure that we grow the economy more. I think we always let you talk about it, Mr Shapps, whether we want to or, or not. You always manage to squeeze it in there. It's good to see you as always. Thanks very much. Thank you.